Hi. If you're on Instagram and are interested in synths, there's still a chance you may have seen a few animals crop up in your feed. In this video, I sit down with a person behind the Instagram account Animals and Synthesizers and dissect a few of his videos to see what synth tips and tricks lay beneath the surface. All right. Okay. So we're here with animals and synthesizers. Let's just say hi. This is me. Uh-huh. And you have to wave your hands. Yeah, otherwise people won't okay. believe we're here. Good. We're okay. here. So it's two of us here. Hey, my name is Tomer. I'm a musician, sound artist. I make electronic music. I used to be a pianist. Uh, now I make some film scores, music for plays, music for dance, stuff like that. And I also make music for animals, uh, animals videos. I make short, uh, these short electronic scores. What made you start this? This was kind of random. I saw a cool video and I was like, hmm. I, I mean, actually I saw this video that is like, that looked like it was shot in outer space. And I was like, okay, I have to make a, a like the appropriate sound for this. So it, so, so the sound correlates with the image because the image was just kind of like, maybe there was no, the, the image looked completely alien and the sound sounded, you know, like a forest or something. So I was like, no, 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 no. This has to sound like a weird and sci-fi. And then I made the, the score and then I kind of went on from there. Walk us through your thought process. How do you approach something like this? The first thing when I start to work on the on a, on a video is actually happens before I start working on the video because I all the time I'm uh, browsing around the internet and I'm just collecting tons of these animal videos and then when I, I think okay now uh, maybe I should work on something I should make a soundtrack then I start watching these videos and I just watch more, tons of them until one of them uh, gets me inspired or I get a, an idea of one of them so I see one of them and I'm like huh, I have, a, I have a vision. So usually it happens, like the vision happened before I start working on the, the video that has something in it that I, that I can imagine sonically. So in this one, it was like the, the movement of the birds. Well, first of all, it's, it's such a beautiful video, such a, I mean, such a scene, right? The elephants, the, the, the contrast between the stillness of the elephant and the movement of the birds is uh, really beautiful. And also, I really like uh, swarms and uh, animals that that are many many small animals that act like like a band. Mm -hmm. And usually, this makes me think of granular synthesis. So, because also granular synthesis is, is kind of well, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but granular synthesis works on many small instances of a synth that work together that have like this sort of a of a global pattern, and you control the global pattern rather than the instances instances themselves. Uh, so this one was made the, all the the bird sound was made with granular synthesis. So, which synth did you use for the birds? A uh, super collider. Is that something you, you programmed? Yeah, I, yeah, I programmed it in Super Collider. It's kind of easy to do granular, granular stuff in Super Collider because it's really like a kind of built into the language. Uh, this is that's, a, that's the script. That's the, this is it. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's going on here? Before we figure out what's going on here, since I realize that Super Collider programming isn't for everyone, we'll get back to this at the end of this video. Meanwhile, let's unpack a few things we can learn from the snake video we saw at the beginning of this video. Okay, so this is the snake. The automation looks like the diamonds of a, of a snake bag. Yeah, well, it actually it goes, the automation is, is really, this was really, uh, this really took me a while because I was drawing the automation according to the movement of the tail. You see, and so uh, you can hear just just this. What's the instrument, and what are you automating? So this is a, a monologue. I'm using three plugins. Yeah, I'm using a wave folder, a grind, which is a, it's kind of a distortion, mm -hmm. and a filter. I think these two these two uh, distortions are are cool that I'm using here. So this 
is a nice, uh, a nice distortion plugin. And this is a, uh, also a nice distortion plugin. This is Mel the Wavefolder? Yeah, huh? yeah, wavefolding is really cool. I, I discovered it recently. Yep. So here there are actually, you see there are two graphs. This, this took me ages to, to do because I was really going frame by frame. And this was really hard to find the rhythm of the, of the snake of the tail because mm -hmm. it's not exactly constant. Um, and in the beginning I was trying to synchronize a, a, like an LFO with tempo, but this was really not working. So eventually I just, just did like one point at a time and they, you have like one LFO which is like left and one LFO which is right. One, one uh, envelope goes, is, is left and one is right. So you see, when the snake goes left oh, and okay. one when the snake goes right. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want it to be that when he goes left the filter is open and when he goes right the filter is closed because this wouldn't make sense. I wanted it to, I don't know, somehow open in both directions, but sound different. So what are the parameters that you're automating here? So uh, one is the drive of the wave, wave folder, and the other is the character of the wave folder, and then the, another one is the wet for the grind distortion. So there are actually mm -hmm. two kinds of distortions, and one of them is, is picking uh, when he goes left and the other one is picking when he goes right. Nice. So, so it has like a, so it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like wow, wow. It sounds like wah, yeah, wah, yeah, you know, like different. They move into each other. One, yeah. one moves into another. So the sides have different, different, uh, different timbre. But it's all, but it, yeah, different timbre, but it's not that one of them is open and one is closed. And yeah, so. Anything else going on in this or? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, so, I mean, later there is, yeah. But so this is like, so anyway, what I, what I did in general is to draw this envelope according to the snake. And then I was kind of looking for a tempo for a BPM that would match the envelope uh, the closest possible. So I found I found one. You see that it's almost on the on the on the grid. On the grid, mm -hmm. I found one which was like working for most of the time, and then I started making this melody that has kind of the same curve as the envelope. You mm -hmm. see, uh, which is this melody. Uh, this is filter. Nice. Yeah, but when I, so yeah, but I was sending already also parameters to the monologue when I was recording it. So maybe we can look at the monologue now. Sure. Uh, do I have this as a preset? Probably not. Okay. With the snake. I don't know, I, I wanted this kind of a uh, snaky Middle Eastern vibe, which the monologue kind of has, mm -hmm. you know, it has like this eh sound. Okay. And, and it has a, also it has a micro tuning. And I was using, because uh, I wanted like a Oriental scale or Middle Eastern scale. Oh, cool. So that's a, uh, that's a microtonal scale? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a microtonal scale. Which is it? It has like a, the, the, there it is like a bit be between major and minor, I think. It's like a Phrygian scale, but the second is a to It's like a, the, the the second note of the scale is it's not slightly out of tune. Yeah, that's a, that's a custom scale you built or one. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It's like a known uh, oh, okay. uh, Oriental scale, but so micro tuning. Here you can choose micro tuning, mm -hmm. and it's a user octave one, so mm -hmm. it's an octave that you define, and then you just say the. You see, is a D sharp is plus. 50 cents, so it's nice. like in between. Cool. Oh, yeah, all the rest are centered. Okay, what other, no, so the, the bass layer and the melody are both monologue. Yeah, all, uh, there are many laser layers that are all like transpositions of this me of the same one. So. Huh, 
this one is for the this was for the yeah uh, it's not it's it's not exactly a transposition it's like a transposition in the scale so it's not a not an equal tra transposition mm -hmm. you know so, okay. so you wrote them individually yeah i just transpose okay. them up but but then you have to keep them in the scale because if you just take them up then uh, yeah, it sounds bad it's not really a, it's not exactly a transposition it's like a harmonizing so take a listen to the final video as the layers add up Okay, next up, let's look at two lessons learned from one of the most popular clips on the channel. The first is to wait for the right sound. What this you, is soft pop. What are you modulating? What are you controlling? Uh, something on the soft pop. How did you... Con it doesn't have MIDI, so you sent CV out somehow? I sent MIDI and then I had a module that does MIDI to CV. So this yeah, it's very bubbly. So yeah, so this is the this is the CV. This is this, this is an envelope that I did that follows the, the mouth opening and closing of the hippo. And you see, and then I just recorded. You see, I, I just recorded this in a loop. Yeah, and played with the parameters mm -hmm. while I was doing it, and recorded many layers. And then I I picked I picked a, a take. Because I have I have different things here. This sounds a bit different. Yeah, they all sound kind of similar. But this is the one that I picked. And what else is going on here? There's so you had this video there, because you had to time it to the video. I was doing all kinds of experiments because I was trying to make something, to find something that will work with the hippo. Mm -hmm. And I already made the envelope, but then I was not happy with the sound. And then I had like the couple of hours at Bastel with the soft pop and I was like, ha, ah, I can just use this envelope on the soft pop. Then it took me like two hours to plug it, to make oh. it, to, to make it work. And then just, and then pretty fast to, nice. to take it. And I think there is also, is there, yeah, there is also this happening here. This is like to make it sound more authentic. Yep. It's just a, a white noise with a, with filter. a filter. Yeah. So it's nice. like like it's like it's a, a shot, you know, because otherwise it sounds it doesn't look right. It looks yeah. Like less it doesn't sound yeah. Nice. So the ambience adds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I have many times like when I try to to make it sound like a, like it's happening, like it's actually the animal. So I add some ambience, or sometimes I make like I really synthesize like birds and animals and stuff like that. But nobody noticed it, so... <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's noticeable when you take it out. Yeah. This one was really easy to make. It was one of the fastest ones because the, the, this cheetah is just running at a constant pace. So mm -hmm. I was just... I just tapped with the cheetah and I had the BPM, which is 175 apparently. Yeah, and this is just the... This is the, the Moog. And you see that I'm sending a lot of stuff here. What am I sending? All of these are automations on the siren. Yeah, these are the notes. And it seems like you, you played them in, not programmed in manually. So you use the siren to program the automations. I don't know. So uh, this is like a filter EG. It's like the, the filter, filter uh, the contour. This is contour. This is a attack of that. Yeah, this is not really changing anything. This is the decay, so it's like getting longer. The sounds are getting longer. This is the filter cutoff and resonance. This is the clip slowed down, by the way. Check out the foot to note sync. And there is another layer that uh, is kind of like a con counterpoint. Which is also, it's again the move with the filter opening. So together it's like... Nice. And there is 
is this thing that is like a it's like a percussion with, with an open filter opening filter sweeping as yeah, yeah yeah just the resonance opening and then just this and yeah, without it this is like a pink noise with an envelope and this one is also pink noise with, <laughs> with an envelope a different envelope yeah maybe a yeah this is it pink noise with a and then there's a reverb effect on both right yeah just a different different EQ on each one of them and then a uh, reverb and the, fi the filter. This is with the reverb. Which reverb here? But, Valhalla. And this is. And this is with the thing. With the filter. With the filter, yeah. And you, and you see, this is really going with the cheetah, with the, with the movement of the cheetah. So it's really helping it. Uh, Next clip, I think, very well demonstrates complex sound design with a single macro on a two oscillator synth. So you see, there is this the, the this curve of automation is when the bubble goes up, right? It goes with the bubble, and this is connected to the timbre of the oscillator and to the. A amount of the LFO. What I like about Massive is the it has macros, so you can have one parameter that is linked to a lot of uh, different parameters. So you see here, uh, parameter one is actually the, the this envelope. Yeah, this is this is not uh, this is not active anymore. So this envelope is connected to a macro. To a macro, yeah. To, this That's envelope is connected to macro number one. Mm -hmm. And macro number one, you can see, first of all, it's connected to timbre. It's like the, the wavetable position and intensity of the first oscillator. This is like a, this is a se step sequencer that is connected to the pitch of oscillator one. So when, the, when macro one is zero, this is actually zero. And then the pitch is, stays the same. But when macro one is going up, then it starts doing this. Right now it's not affecting, but now it's affecting. And there is another one. That's the modulation depth. This, this is the modulation, yeah, yeah, modulation depth, exactly. So there are two step sequencers mm -hmm. going here in parallel. One of them, the, the depth of the modulation is uh, controlled by macro three. And this one is only happening on the second and third time. And then there is the second oscillator the frequency is also connected to this step sequencer, but this one is controlled by macro 2. So macro 2 is only happening in the end when the lizard is moving. See, so there is another sound coming. So, uh, uh, yeah. So this one, so actually, all of these different sounds are happening from one instance of massive and just with modulation of macros, you can completely change the sound and, and, Amazing. and make it make a real development. I think this is what's cool about synthesizers, right? Is that you can take them from one mode to the next mode through everything. So this entire clip is basically just two oscillators being modulated differently. Uh, yeah. And, and, and there is here, you see, this is a, a little envelope. Uh, this is pitch bend. Mm -hmm. So it goes also a little bit up with the pitch because here... Play this project again. Now that, we, now that we sort of know what's going on, play it again just at a slower tempo, and the video as well in a slower tempo. Uh, Is that yeah, I th let's see Half what speed. let's see what will happen. Nice. Yeah. So that's it. Nothing else. Just reverb. Yeah. 
uh, reverb and, del and delay. Okay, in this next video we'll look at synthesizing a forest. Ignore the main actor, if it's possible, and listen to the background. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's take a look at so, the layers. Yes, yeah, so one. if we look just at, at, the, at the layers, so I have here... You see, it's, it's very soft. What's doing that? What's making that? It's the filter. It's uh, there is it's just noise, noise going to a filter and with resonance, with resonance and and they're uh, going back through. Uh, there is a feedback, internal feedback, and it goes back through a delay, and the feedback amount is modulated, and uh, the cutoff is modulated, and the bandwidth of the band pass is modulated, and how is it modulated? You see. This is kind of a weird shape mm -hmm. that is modulating the the resonance, the bandwidth, and this is a weird another weird shape that is modulating the, the filter cutoff. And yeah, it's a bandpass filter. And this rate, the rate of both of them, uh, is also modulated. So it so it's, it doesn't uh, re loop. Doesn't okay. Right, so the rate of the modulation always is, is also modulated. Mm -hmm. uh, What's modulating it? Uh, LFOs. So this is L the LFO. This, sine this LFO, yeah, just sign LFOs. This LFO is modulating this weird shape, and the other LFO is modulating this weird shape, and the rate of this weird shape. And yeah, one is going to cut off, one is going to bandwidth. Uh, there is also a, it's also on the on the. The, the same one that is modulating the cutoff is also side chaining the the amplitude. So yes. it's only it doesn't come out all the time, but just according to this graph. Mm -hmm. And and also the other one is also affecting the f feedback feedback amount. I think this is this is it. Yeah, this is what's happening. And that's here. just one layer. This is one layer. Yeah. Okay. So so this this is the sound that it's making, and and all of them are very soft. And there is a delay and a reverb on everything mm -hmm. to make it sound like it's in the rainforest. So this is this is one layer. Let's hear it without the reverb for a second. That okay. same that same one layer, but without any reverb. Okay. Or delay. Cool. Okay. Okay. It's just the noise. Mm -hmm. And this is another uh, layer. It's actually very similar. Ah, and I see that I'm I'm modulating here something. I wonder what it is. What what do these do? Ah, this is the time of the delay and the amount of feedback. Mm -hmm. So this is it's like external modulation. It's extra modulation. You see these two graphs. And this one is very similar. Yeah. Okay. And. Another one which is also very similar. And this is this is the three together. Uh, one is turned all the way left, one is turned right, and one is center. Nice. So they make this kind of this is like kind of a I don't know bugs. I think this they were supposed to be the bugs, mm -hmm. like insects. And here It's like this kind of a bird. Mm -hmm. It's also, you see, it's also massive. And yeah, you see, so this, there is an LFO that is affecting the global volume. And it's kind of a, it's a weird uh, oscillator, two oscillators. Wave table. Yeah. And here is another one. A wave, wave table, one of the wave table shape is called cicadas. It mm -hmm. kind of just makes this sound. So. And then everything together is like this. 
and you see one is this one also there they are a bit different with the pen and then if you add again the amazing very nice and then there's the cat yeah the cat is uh, another massive i think another yeah it's just uh that's isolated yeah this is just the cat uh, it's, it's really soft the the yeah of course so is that mainly pitch bends uh, there is a there is an lfo here on the pitch and yeah and the pitch bands pitch bend automations with pitch an bend LFO. automation and an lfo exactly and also a filter Okay, let's get back to our elephant and synthesized bird swarm. Now, while this patch does involve code, the generative ideas in it are applicable to other synths as well, so I encourage you to stick around. So, this is one instance. So each instance goes through these three notes, you see? Mm -hmm. It's like this is 60s. This, this is C, this is D, and this is uh, F. Yep. It goes through a pulse oscillator, and there is a sine oscillator that changes the, the, the pulse size, the pulse, pulse width. Mm -hmm. So there's an LFO on the pulse width. Pulse width. Pulse okay. width, yeah. And there is a normal envelope, and there is a filter also with a little bit of a LFO, a filter with an LFO. Yeah. So this is, this is one. So this is how, how one sounds. It's, it's, I mean, it's granular, granular only in the sense that there are a lot of instances that are happening at the same time. It's may, maybe it's, you can call it like a lot of polyphony. Okay. But yeah, actually, this is, this is one. This is one. Okay. Yeah, this is one. You see, and there, is, there is an LFO on the sign and an LFO on the pulse width. At different rates. At, yeah. And... And then, yeah, and then, just multiply. Yeah, I just add more instances. This is more, more, more. So now there are like 12 instances happening at the same time. And now I add, I add an, another instance, which is a fifth above. And this is a, an octave above. And this is an octave below. And this is a fourth above. And now, yeah, now I have like 24 instances happening at the same time. And it's just this, this line. Beautiful. Yeah. And is there a rhythm, the tempo of the sequence is the same or you change the... the no, the, the, the rate is slightly different. It's like 10% different randomly every time. Every time I, I call one, it's like uh, the rate is, there is a random for the rate and a random for the rates of, of the LFOs. So that's it for now. I'll be posting one more Super Collider walkthrough exclusively for the people who support this channel on Patreon, where you'll also be able to get a copy of my constantly updated book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks. Hit like if this was useful. Go on Instagram and follow Animals and Synthesizers. And thanks for watching. this